Hi, welcome back to the channel. And today we're doing a haul video. Um, I started this uh, YouTube channel several months ago and little bit by little bit, I've been kind of showing some of the things that I'm purchasing. Um, this channel is dedicated to uh, my journey uh, acquiring antiques in Europe, packing them into a container, shipping them back to the States uh, for selling at antique shows. And uh, in addition to that, we also have a, an old building that we're renovating and using as kind of a receiving area for, uh, for receiving the containers. So um, a lot of these items that we're going to look at today are actually items that have been featured in previous videos, but I wanted to have one video where they're kind of all together. And uh, I made a few mistakes along the way. I'm very new to this. And uh, like I said, this is about my journey and I'm gonna be very transparent and show you the mistakes as well as the successes. And uh, so I do have a couple lamps I wanna discuss that were kind of mistakes. And uh, uh, we'll talk about those toward the end of the video. So stay tuned. Oh, I don't know if you can hear the air siren uh, actually I'm in Poland we're not in Ukraine so not sure why that's going on um, but yeah let's go ahead and get into it uh, I have a number of lamps that I want to show you and a few other items in addition to the lamps so uh, let's go ahead and get started okay this is a very unique piece so this is a lamp that's a uh, it's kind of a conversion but it's not a modern conversion and it was made out of a uh, a welder's torch which is really interesting because uh as you can see it looks like it was totally designed in this way from day one uh whoever did this did a really good job the um the work that they did in converting it, it was, uh, I don't know if it was contemporaneous, but uh, it, it's not a recent job. It's something that somebody's done a long time ago. So it has acquired some age uh, since the time that it was converted into a lamp. And uh, it is really cool. It looks, uh, uh, has that warm rubbed kind of a look and uh, it just has a lot going for it. So beautiful patina and uh, great materials and uh, it's really high quality. Okay, so before we move on, I just wanted to mention that uh, whenever you're into buying and selling antiques, uh, flipping antiques, uh, you're gonna have to do a lot of cleaning, a lot of repairs, uh, fixes, um, give a lot of TLC to the things that you're gonna flip. And uh, the items that I'm showing you today, none of that stuff has happened yet. So. I'm a, I'm a procrastinator, and uh, I thought that I would just buy this stuff and uh, focus on sourcing, and then when I get it to the States, then I'll take time and uh, clean it up. So there's some charm in the dust, and I uh, hope you can appreciate that. Uh, this lamp here is a custom one-off piece. So this lamp is uh, a conversion or, or kind of a Frankenstein lamp that was made by a local artist not very far from where I live in Poland and it's uh, really cool. It's made of very heavy components. There's a cast iron door as a base. This door was uh, presumably for gaining access to some kind of electrical components. And the riser was uh, custom formed to give uh, the perfect angle on the lamp. And the top is a uh, also a cast iron um, backing plate for the bulb with the cage that protects the actual bulb. A very industrial look, very cool. It's got a chic appeal to it. And uh, it's also been clear coated, so it has that kind of really protected, nice, cared for look. And uh, it's got a funny inscription here, limited edition, I guess. Uh, once he finds a, a thing that kind of works, he will make uh, multiples of them. So this is one of the prototypes. But uh, yeah, it's all uh, got new wiring and needs the plug change to uh, US plug. But uh, it's high, very high quality. And uh, this may be something that I keep. So it's always good to uh, get things in pairs when you can. And here are a couple of uh, large candlesticks. So Poland is like 99% Catholic, and you cannot throw a stick around here without hitting a Catholic church. So there are lots of uh, relics, different items that come from the church. 
And here are a couple of kind of neo-Gothic candlesticks. And these are quite heavy. It's like they're made out of pewter or tin, I think tin. And uh, they are very heavy because there's, uh, I think, some lead in the base. And uh, they're really neat. They've got some age to them. And uh, oftentimes when you find these in the market, they will have been rewired for lamps. But these are still set up for candles. So uh, here in one of them, you can see the little tongue type uh, metal tabs that would hold the candle in and they've actually been broken off or removed from the other one but uh, as a pair they look uh, really cool they'd be great on a, a fireplace mantle or uh, in a library so here we have a uh, really cool machinists task lamp so this is the kind of lamp that people imagine when they think about antique industrial uh, task lamps and uh, industrial lighting. It's really cool because it has the um, articulating arm and the housing for the bulb is really cool. And uh, you can just look at it and you can instantly tell that this was made in a different generation. This was made when things were built to last. And uh, it has this uh, little bracket here that will mount onto the table and it rotates and uh, the articulating arm you can set the height and uh, they're very comfortable they have a lot of style to them and yeah just looking at it you can see this was uh, from a different time a lot of class okay so the jury is still out on this particular lamp um, it is pretty cool though and so yeah uh, like I said the jury is still out on this one uh, when I looked at this online it looked like it had a very heavy quality to it. It looked like it was made from, you know, very heavy steel and it had engineered components here on the the uh, the tripod base. And when I got it, it, it was made from some lighter material. So I don't know if this is a modern reproduction, but uh, I'm not disappointed in it because I only, I paid less than $20 for this lamp. And uh, even in a store that uh, features uh, high quality reproductions, uh, I'm definitely gonna make some money on this. So uh, it is pretty cool. The thing that kind of gave it away for me is the little clasp. Uh, you know, when you buy old wooden boxes or uh, interesting little antique pieces, if you look at the hardware on them, that's a dead giveaway for if they are actually the, uh, the real deal, the real McCoy. So uh, this doesn't have that. And so I think it's a little bit more modern, but it is still a really uh, cool piece of, uh, lighting for somebody who's doing the uh, industrial uh, chic interior design thing in their home and uh, it's uh, it's still going to be a, a good sale for me Nineteen seventies, maybe early 80s taxi lamp so here's an item that's not super old, but it is pretty cool. Uh, it's more vintage, I would say, than antique, and it's probably from the uh, 80s. And it's a taxi light that would go on top of a taxi, obviously. And uh, the cool thing about it is it has a gigantic magnet on the bottom. So if you're designing your man cave or your she shed and you've got a sign on your wall, uh, you can plop this right up to it and uh, it will hold. It will not come off. So uh, it will. Uh, give your uh, interior design some lighting and uh, texturing lighting is always a great thing. And uh, yeah, this thing is really cool. So I mentioned a couple things that were not technically lamps, but uh, they're kind of the same scale and scope. And also uh, they were very interesting for me. Um, like I said, you've seen some of these items in my previous videos, but I, I just wanted to show them here in this collection because they're really neat. Some of the favorite things that I've actually found. This is, I think it's called the Eucharist. If you're Catholic and you know uh, what this is called, please let me know in the comments below. So here's another uh, Catholic church relic. And I haven't had it confirmed, but I think it's called a Eucharist. Uh, please let me know in the comments below if you can confirm or correct me on that. And it was uh, used to hang like a little piece of uh, whatever they have for communion and was made for transporting in it in a procession. So. Uh, yeah, it's really cool. It's made out of bronze. It's ultra heavy. I mean, it's like it's like a five pound bag of sugar <laughs> If you can you know visualize how how heavy that is so it's very high quality it is um, Held 
together from the bottom with a screw so it makes me know that it's definitely from the 1900s but it's very kind of humble these things can be very ornate and very elaborate and this is a very humble one and that's kind of why i like it so it would be great in a masculine setting like on a dresser or on a bookshelf and uh, it's not the kind of thing you see every day and yeah i really love it so here's a vintage uh rack for holding test tubes and uh, it's got a uh, bifurcated base here which would allow a heating element to kind of sit underneath the uh, the test tube so it's just basically a test tube holder but i thought it would be cool to set on a dresser you could hang your keys on it or a better idea that i had i thought i might even keep it and uh put a shot of my favorite drink into it and cork it and uh leave it hanging there on my dresser for that emergency situation so uh you know, I can't be the only person that thinks that's a cool idea, so uh, maybe that'll come in great as a gift for somebody. Maybe I should kind of set it up to uh, suggest that kind of a use for it when I, when I put it in my antique booth. This is a, uh, a very unique kind of a masculine lamp. Here's a, another kind of unique quality lamp. It's a uh, height adjustable and uh, the, the, the lamp shade actually articulates. So it's very cool. It's brass and uh, I think it's kind of a masculine looking lamp and would be great in a, in a library uh, or, you know, or on your desk. And uh, you can see it's got a little bit of age to it. The, the cable's old. The plug has been replaced, but I'm going to have to replace place it once again because uh, uh, I, it's going to be used in the United States so uh, but pretty unique this is one of my favorite pieces that I've bought uh, so far so when I posted this on my uh, earlier video I wasn't really sure what it was uh, I thought that perhaps it was for a barbershop it is amber glass very thick and it has a uh, nickel plated brass fittings all around it the uh, nickel plating is kind of worn off and you can see the brass kind of coming through and it looks amazing uh, at first I thought it was maybe for a barber shop where they would you know drop the scissors or the blades in there to disinfect them with some kind of chemical uh, I wasn't very far off as it turns out a couple people commented uh, on that video and it turns out that it was a chemoclave or you know a sterilization uh, tool for surgical tools so your scalpel or whatever would be dropped in there the chemicals would disinfect it and uh, it's probably late 1800s this is actually a, a British medical lamp I'm not sure how it ended up here in Poland uh, it took me a long time to identify it because it has a maker's mark tag on it which is not uh the tag of the actual uh, manufacturer so i think that that tag actually refers to the uh, retail location where the lamp was being sold or the dealer the medical equipment dealer and uh but it is kind of a unique uh lamp you don't see a lot of these and it has a really cool kind of uh heavy duty base and uh it has um, i think it's a bakelite handle up here and uh, you can position it any way you want when i uh, stand this lamp straight up uh, it's about shoulder height so it's actually pretty large or you can kind of form it down to where it's not taking up quite as much space uh, by angling the the risers and uh, i think it's one of my favorite lamps it has the coolest industrial look to it and it's a it's a major piece it's a floor a standing floor lamp and uh, it has a little bit of uh, condition issue, just been banged around a little bit, but uh, yeah, it's super cool and uh, probably one of my favorite lamps. This is a, uh, a tripod lamp from Soviet times. I think these were used both in the uh, military and for road crews. And it's cool, it has a, like a really engineered uh, system for positioning the spotlight or the reflector on top. And it's kind of like an OD green, uh, but you can see that uh, that paint happened a long time ago and uh, it's had some age since the painting. Not sure what the original color was. Uh, I didn't see any other kind of 
uh, color showing through in the places where it's uh, scuffed or nicked. So I think that was actually the original color for the lamp. And uh, yeah, I need to rewire this, but uh, it's it's a really great lamp. And the tripod is super heavy. Every component on it has a military industrial look to it. So this is an ideal piece for anybody who's looking for a tripod lamp. Okay, so at the uh, the beginning of the video, I promised that I was going to share a lesson that I've learned uh, in this first wave of purchasing uh, items for sending back. And uh, that lesson is that when you see something for sale online, you have to be very critical of the images. You have to be very sure about what you're buying. And uh, don't be afraid to ask the seller what you're looking at. Um, you might think it's this big and it's only this big, or uh, you might not see some of the details or the damage that has been cleverly kind of hidden when the listing was made. So uh, I'm going to show you two examples of that. And the first one is this lamp. So this is a lamp that uh, is made out of Bakelite. And uh, if you want to look these up, they are made by uh, the letter E and then the surname Cole. So they're like E. Cole lamps. And I uh, think E. coli bacteria. No, don't think E. coli bacteria. Uh, e. Cole lamps. And... Uh, they are probably late 50s, early 60s. And uh, all the lamps that I buy basically have to be rewired, but uh, this one didn't come with a wire. And uh, it had this like little lampshade that was different than some of the other ones. And I thought, oh, well, that, that one might be more unique than some of the other ones. And when I got it, I could see that somebody had uh, put it together and it wasn't the original lampshade. Now it still works. Um, and it's pretty cool. You can uh, hang it on the wall and uh, lift up the shade so that it uh, would be like over a door to light a doorway, or you could put it upside down on the wall and it would uh, light up a piece of artwork that you have hanging on the wall, or you can use it as a, a regular desk lamp. But uh, yeah, it doesn't have the original lampshade. Um, and in spite of that, I th still think it's a very cool, unique lamp that you don't see very often in the United States. And uh, but the lesson learned is that you want to be very critical when you're looking at the images. So I'm a little uh, thick-headed. I didn't quite learn my lesson the first time, so it took another time to get my lesson learned. Uh, this is kind of a funny little story because um, I was browsing online looking for the older lamps, and I saw this lamp that looked like it was straight out of the 70s, like right out of Soviet times. It was like really quirky and uh, kind of odd and that's kind of one of the hallmarks of those uh, soviet era items and i saw this lamp and it had this kind of weird wood base but it had like this metal lamp on top of it which was kind of industrial looking and together i thought wow that's kind of really unique and quirky and that's going to stand out and so i purchased it well as it turns out that lamp was just sitting on a uh, a little stand that's uh, basically designed for putting flower pots on and it wasn't part of the lamp. So uh, when it came, I just got the uh, the main lamp, which is uh, what you can see here in the top. And uh, what makes it even more embarrassing is that that's like one of the most common lamps that you can get uh, when you're purchasing uh, industrial lamps from online marketplaces here in uh, Eastern Europe. So uh, I should have known immediately what that was. Uh, and if I look really close here at the pictures, I can see that the lamp wasn't exactly centered in the wood, so it was not uh, kind of an inlaid base there. So uh, the lesson I learned is I need to really pay attention and to ask the seller if I'm not sure about something. So, so here's a, an interesting piece. I'm just going to show a picture of it because it's super heavy. It's already packed away. And... Uh, this is a chandelier that we bought. It has a lot of crossover appeal. So whether you're into chic or that kind of grand millennial or um, cottage, this this is the thing. And uh, it can be used as a candle holder or places in those little flower uh, heads there. You could put candles in or you could wire this for electric lighting. And uh, it is a gigantic piece and it's super heavy and super quality. It was made by a blacksmith. It probably is a one-off and... Uh, yeah, we didn't pay very much. I think only $50. So that was like a super score and it is definitely worth hundreds of bucks. So, uh, yeah, um, 
I really like this. Sorry, I can't show you the real thing. It was just too much to kind of pull it out. But uh, yeah, check that out. And yeah, so that uh, pretty much is it for my lamp so far. I will uh, continue to uh, be picking up things over time. It's kind of an expensive deal to buy an entire container worth of antiques. And uh, as I am able to kind of acquire all of these items, I'm going to continue to make the videos. So uh, very shortly in April, I will be back in Illinois. I'm going to be starting some projects in the um, rehab of the building. So uh, stay tuned. I'll be uh, putting a lot of content there about the building. So if that's uh, how you found my channel. So uh, thanks for visiting and we will see you again soon.